Hi, everyone. Welcome to Analyze Your Trade, episode number 22 for February 6, 2018. Um, tonight, we will be discussing your trade ideas. Uh, we had about 40 people over the last few days submit up to five symbols each, and uh, we, we are going to talk about those tonight. On my screen, or on your screen right now while I'm talking, you should see the list for tonight. So uh, it was also in the email reminder that was sent out uh, a while ago. And my name is David Cosmeter. I'm the creator of Timing Research, and I developed the show with Dean Jenkins of Follow Me Trades. And he is here to moderate tonight, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to him. All right. Hey, thanks, David. Good to be here. Welcome, traders. Um, wow. You're going to get some... We, we need to record the the pre-show, David. That Sometimes that's, you know... That's as interesting yeah, as, the, as, the, as the, the live session. So um, there are no lack of opinions and there's no lack of anything to talk about in uh, today's market, uh, the last couple of days. Mm -hmm. Big stuff mm -hmm. happening. So uh, we're going to have trouble mm -hmm. staying on task here and just talking about the trades that traders are interested in. But that's OK. I think we'll talk probably about the broad market. We've got some cool ideas here, some new trades. I've never heard of a couple of them. And then there's some old friends that's going to be uh, pretty cool to revisit. And I'm sure uh, we'll be slipping in some commentary and opinions and analysis on the bigger picture. What is going on, man? Uh, we were just saying a uh, pretty interesting comment that uh, at least my opinion, you know, for the last year, day trading has been kind of tough without any big swings in the market. And uh, we can't say that anymore. We got, we got some swings. We got some price movement for sure. And uh, it's exciting. But uh, before we get started, we got a great panel here, and let's have them introduce themselves and uh, just you know one two minutes, you know who you are, what your approach to the market is, what you got going on. We'll start with uh, you, Michael. And good evening, um, I'm Michael Filigera. I am the owner and purveyor of LogicalSignals.com. I started my trading career in 1979. I was a market maker on the Pacific Options Exchange here uh, for many years, but I've traded here, I've traded in London, I've traded in Amsterdam and Germany, and then came back to San Francisco. Um, happily retired from the options. Um, I, oh God, and now it's even longer. I'm going to say nine years ago, and now I basically have my website and I'm switching that around I'll go into that later, but I uh, trade futures and still options, I should say. Okay. Thank you, Michael. And it's always Welcome. good to be back on the panel with you. Uh, Jim, if you'd introduce yourself. We, we're old hats at doing this together, sure. but not everybody knows you. Go ahead and okay. introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, I'm Jim Kenny, and I provide the content for the Option Professor DVDs. It's uh, uh, seven set uh, DVDs explaining the uses and the risks of the different option strategies out there. A couple of them that I've talked about here on the broadcast, I'll get into later in the broadcast. But uh, if you'd like to know more about how these options work, uh, this is another way to go, and I provide the content for them. Okay, very good. Thanks, Jim. You're and good. Mike, what you got, man? Who are you? What you got going? Hey, Dean, everybody. Nice to be back. My name is Mike Pisani. I'm one of the moderators over at alphashark.com. Uh, I specialize in looking at the option flow, and I, I use that to give me not only where I should be paying, well, putting my money for their trading or what type of swing trades to take, but it tells me the sentiment of the market and what's going on. So like for today, uh, for yesterday, for example, we had a lot of flow in the first 30 minutes that was bullish in short term, and then it stopped. And when it stopped, I told everybody, be careful because that was a sure indication that they weren't overly bullish at that point. They weren't sure. So if you're interested, come on over and check us out at Alpha Shark. You can find me there as well. Thanks for having me. All right. And uh, good to be back with you on the panel here, Mike. I know we've done this a few times together. Uh, I am Dean Jenkins, founder of followmetrades.com. I, I run a live trading room. I have a stock picks advisory service, and I've got some education courses. Uh, I focus on a little bit longer term and I'm in trades typically four to six weeks long, looking for big swings, big impulsive moves. 
I use a combination of Elliott Wave and Ichimoku Cloud. I say when East meets West, profits explode. So we'll have some different perspectives, some shorter term and some longer term trades as we look at the various symbols here. And let's go ahead and get right into it. We're going to be sharing charts, giving some opinion on the trades you have. And again, I think we'll be interjecting probably with some overall market commentary. But uh, we want to honor the, you know, the, the proposition of the show here, which is it's, you, it's all about you, the traders calling in. And, you know, we take we do a survey, find out what the symbols people are most interested in. And then you get a panel to offer their opinion. They say we love it or we're neutral on it. But uh You'll, you'll get opinions uh, either way, and maybe some great trade ideas. So let's go through the list. Let's kick it off with KOPN, and we will keep our panel order. So, Michael, what do you think there on uh, KOPN? Um, I'm not familiar with the, with the company, but being a technical trader, I pulled up a weekly chart and also a monthly chart. So the weekly, I, I think, is much cleaner. It would appear to me... Um, Right now, the stock needs to hold above $3, obviously. It's gone down and touched it three times since October of last year, and it's held. The structure of this rally that actually began in, I'm going to say, March of 2016 still has, I believe, more upside available. So I'm my call is going to be if it remains above $3, um, it's a buy. And I would expect that it's going to go above four and a half before all said and done. That's it. Did we lose Dean? <laughs> hey, uh, uh, Dean, are you there? His chart is. All right, uh, Mike, do you want to give your your thoughts on KOPN. Everybody hear me okay? Am I breaking in and out? I'm getting a lot of feedback here tonight. Yeah, now I can. Okay. All right. So, um, you know, I looked at this stock and it, to me, this is not a stock that I would typically want. First of all, it's a small, it's a small speculative biotech stock. I went up and looked it up and it's not going to trade technically. So Michael, where I agree with you, I'm a technical guy. I used to, I like to look at the technicals of something. This thing's going to trade basically on news and on speculation. And my guess is it had some bad news or some drugs not going well for, and that's why you're getting this kind of whippy action that's not not really trading well. But to your point, if it stays above three, it's probably okay. But if you need to look at the, the drug pipeline on a name like this and determine what's coming out and when, and that's what you're playing for, and you need to size this with the idea that this could go to zero. This is the type of stock that uh, could quickly go to zero because if they're – everything's hinged on one or two drugs and that drug fails, they have nothing left. So for me, this is a spec play. You play with small size. And if it goes, you know, if it has a real big drug, this thing bursts above all this high of 480 and just takes off. So that's how I look at all right. it. All right. Can you, can you guys hear me? Am I back? Oh, good. Yeah, you're back. Yeah. yeah. Good. Okay, good, good. So I heard uh, Mike's comments. Uh, I'm not sure, Jim. Did you get to weigh in yet? No, I was going to ask. Yeah, uh, are we sure this is a biotech company? Because when I'm looking at it, it, says semiconductors. Can anyone clarify if it's a KOPN is semiconductors uh, or I'm sorry, biotech? It came up on the wrong. I I clicked off on it. You're right. Okay, because I, I, I didn't want to read it. I didn't want to hear. And the <laughs> Yahoo switched off the profile on me. Yeah. <laughs> But I think most of what you were saying was actually very accurate. Uh, this is a thin uh, stock. It's a 237 market cap, so it's kind of tiny in the semiconductor space. It's got short interest of 10%, so somebody doesn't like it. Uh, it's got moving averages of uh, 330 against uh, 366, so they're inverted to the downside. So, uh, you know, uh, this kind of uh, stock uh, would certainly uh, be a highly speculative one. And like you say, anything at $3 is an option. Uh, because it can uh, go way down, uh, but at three bucks, there's not much at risk as far as cash. Uh, three bucks, and uh, if it were to get above 366, and the 50 gets above uh, there, uh, and if could it take out that recent high um, in the area around 3 uh, 60, 380, 
you know, there could be something there, but this is uh, definitely a crapshoot uh, from the standpoint of the size of the company and from the standpoint uh, of uh, the trading action. Uh, so, you know, basically that's how I would feel about it. All right. Well, I actually like it. Um, I like these smaller plays. I like to mix them. You know, I'm not just a, uh, you know, small fry guy, um, but I like to mix them into my portfolio. And I see a pattern. I, I mentioned earlier, I'm a Elliott Wave and Ichimoku Cloud combination. So we had a big run up to, uh, you know, just over 450. We've had a perfect retracement. And now what we're looking at is that everybody's noticed that, that you know, hard floor so far at $3. I wouldn't take it now. But if it can break the 200, which is at 366, it would yeah. be above the mm -hmm. Ichimoku Cloud. It would have found some solid support. You know, we yeah. got a higher high. That would be a higher low. Goes on to a new high above this, just a tick or two up, you know, about 387, 390, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. um, a pop up into the, the Wave 5 zone, you know, just from a technical analysis, could take us 465 to 568. I would take, uh, I would take a half size position on this because I, I, I agree with the other comments, you know, it's a smaller issue, trades at okay volume, 800,000 shares today. Um, but uh, you know, these things can also gap down through your stop and <clears throat> cause a little pain. So I'll take a half size position uh, after it cleared that last high, be a little cautious. Um, but if it took off, then start scaling into this thing as it goes up. Uh, that's a bunch of ifs. Not, I'm not ready to trade it yet. I would want to see that, that next part of the pattern take out that last high. And then I'd be all excited about it. But um, I got it on my watch list. I'm going to make a note of it here and then uh, keep watching. So interesting. I'm glad that one came up. Surprising. I don't know if they've been in the news why they would make the top of the list because that meant several people had to be interested. So maybe there's some breaking news on it or something. Uh, next is uh, Akmai. So uh, that's a little bit bigger issue, a little bit uh, uh, better known. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and what a and they what a it looks I'll like they recorded call. today. They I'll did. Hold my, I'll hold my comment on Akmai. Okay. But uh, let's let's keep our order. Go ahead, Mike. Michael, um, they actually followed everybody down yesterday and did a recovery today. Not all that great, um, but then they reported earnings and they've gone in last or a month ago high at sixty nine fifty six. And based on earnings, I still think it might have a little bit of a pop higher. Um, and I'm looking at the hourly, but then I think it pulls back. But then I think you buy it. So I am looking at the daily, you know, I guess when they, something happened in December because it gapped from 58 up to 64. And whether it comes back down and finishes filling that gap, I don't necessarily see it chart-wise. Um, so I think on pullbacks from current levels, you, you can buy it for an additional move higher. Okay. You, you kind of like it. Yeah. Uh, Jim, Akmai. Well, uh, the company's got a lot of strength going on right now. And, um, you know, not unlike the uh, S&P, you know, when the 200-day average is at 2,500 and change and you're trading almost at 2,900, uh, if you're not expecting some rain, you are going to get wet. And so here, I'd be concerned that the 200 days at 53, we're going to be trading probably near 69 tomorrow because it's up big in the aftermarket. And there you go. You're 30% above the 200 day. So if you're in this company enjoying the ride, God bless you. Uh, but as far as entry level stuff up here, 30% above the 200 day, you know, that could be a little bit more dice than I'm looking to roll right now. Okay, so one thumbs up, one thumbs down. Mike, break the tie, man. Um, you know, reported, looks like earnings were good. I think they raised guidance. I think that gap up, they raised guidance earlier. I think they just reaffirmed it, um, what you were oh, talking okay. about, Michael, if I remember correctly. Okay. Um, and you're coming in, so this is a weekly chart. I just wanted to pull it up because I had earnings ready. And it's coming right into that 70 area is going to be some big resistance for it to break through. <laughs> That said, it gets through there. You know, the 78 is the all-time high. It's not that far away from it. The one thing this market is doing, it's rewarding names it likes. Netflix, Amazon, <laughs> they did not dump 
during this this two day pull in, right? They held in pretty good. Even Boeing is still right at the eight day. If it's any good, it'll hold in and go tomorrow. And that's that's what you need to look at. If it continues to hold this upper range, this flag area, you stay with it versus the eight day until it gives you reason to get out of it. And so if um, I don't know if I'd chase it on the open, I'd see what the overall market does. But if the market looks to bounce, they seem to like the earnings on this. I'd look I'd look to stay with it and uh, try to see if I can get a break up to 78. All right. Um, this chart uh, is the one I, I hate. I just hate the chart in terms of a you know trend or swing trading. It's a gappy, chaotic mother. It, it I, I, there's no pattern. There's no technical trading here. Um, this thing moves on news, obviously. Uh, the only thing I would like on this, I, I wouldn't mind an earnings play. You know, doing I've been re evolving and refining the strategy. I'm taking strangles on earnings. And something that gaps like this would have my attention, right? Just for big couple day moves, take a strangle. You don't know which way it's going, uh, but it already, they just announced today after the close. So that's off, maybe next quarter. Um, I wouldn't try and trend or swing trade this one because um, there's no, it's chaos. It's total chaos. Uh, so mm -hmm. That's my take on it, right? I don't, I try to have a bit of an edge in my trade <laughs> and, and chaos does not create edges uh, for me. It's my take on it. Interesting though, uh, Tesla. Let's talk about uh, <laughs> Elon. Elon's uh, uh, what is it? The Model S, not the S. What's the what's the Roadster? Anyway, shot a Roadster in space today, right? That's pretty cool. Is that going to help Tesla? I don't know, um, but uh, it's pretty cool playing David Bowie and shooting a Roadster yeah. into space. I, lo I love the quote from Elon Musk. They were talking to him before the the uh, you know the Rocket X shot, and he said, well, "You know what, what? What do you think if it if it goes up in a big fireball?" And he goes, "Well, that's going to be a huge drag, man." Well put. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but it worked. Uh, but that's off the topic. What, Tesla. What do you think about Tesla, Michael? Um, being that I live in San Francisco, um, everybody. I'm going to say a lot of millennials are are now buying Teslas, and they're buying the uh, Model X, which which is the SUV with the bat wings. Um, Tesla, at least in the Bay Area, is the stock that everybody loves to hate um, because they don't particularly like Elon Musk. I but I believe that it is the um, it is the future, you know, going electric versus a uh, gas. I believe is is the is the route, and so I see a lot of other companies doing a mad dash scramble to get on board with cheaper um, versions. But I think the Tesla will win out. Now, as far as the stock right now, I don't particularly like the current pattern, so I think that it's going to do another down leg, and we're looking at it'll probably drop back towards two ninety, is where I feel. If two ninety holds. Then of course I do think it's a buy. Um, if it doesn't, then I would think you're going to start to find support. Hopefully, around the two two seventy five to two eighty five area, and then I think it becomes a buy again. Um, but the Tesla is also very heavily option stock. It's it's heavily traded, option wise. Yeah. So absolutely. there's a lot of things that one can do for playing both sides. Jim, you got your uh, you got your your Model X or your S ordered? Not 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 yet, uh, but I do have some people who come to the basketball games and they uh, open up their car doors like Batman. So it's, I've seen the cars. That's for sure. Uh, even the SUV opens up like Batman with the gold wing type stuff. You know. At any rate, uh, as far as the stock is concerned, this guy has been given more rope than uh, just about anybody, it seems. Uh, 
yeah. uh, because uh, this company keeps losing a whole bunch of money, burning through a whole bunch of cash. But if he comes up with a new offering of any type of debt or any type of equity, they jump on it like uh, people with water in the desert. Short interest is still 18% of the stock. So people certainly um, have uh, shorts to cover if it starts rising. Mm -hmm. And uh, the volume seems to be drying up a little bit. The 50-day volume is 5.5 million shares a day. And the 200-day volume, 6.5 million shares a day. Uh, the word's trading right now, it's kind of been a no man's land. It's uh, above the 50 day. It's underneath the 200 day. It looks like it would like to go higher. And I guess if you buy it here, you'd get out if it broke 300 and you'd close your eyes and hope that nobody looks at their uh, financial statement with uh, too close of a, a microscope. Mm -hmm. Because you're betting come, you're betting come line on here, but the come line has been winning for this stock and for a long time. Sure has. Sure has. All right, Mike. Alpha Shark Mike. I have a really different view than all you guys on this, so this is going to be fun. So first off, what does Tesla have on Thursday? Earnings. Earnings, guys. Earnings. Earnings it reports this week. It has an implied move of $18. So for me, the next two sessions, unless you're going to trade it with Common, it's on the no-touch list because the options are jacked through the roof right now. Mm. Not just because of everything going on, but because it has earnings. That said, mm. um, you know you have a hard cap at... at at that 360 area, right? That mm -hmm. uh, 360, it's been resistance multiple times here. And you have a nice little uptrend support here that's coming in around three, you know, let's call it 318 right now, if it was to drop to it instantly tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been consolidating in this range now, this large range for the better part of the year up here, waiting for the news to break out. And now we have now we have Tesla the flamethrower, guys. I mean what else can we ask for? You buy your kids a flamethrower for Christmas. They can go out there and burn their neighbor's house down. I, I don't see anything that can go wrong with that. Uh, personally, I think you just have to see what earnings come. This thing's like a news magnet. Today, they were talking about more issues with the Tesla, the Model 3. I think Key Bank downgraded or had a negative note intraday on it. The other day, it was news that Lowe's and Home Depot are going to start carrying Tesla's products on the solar, on the roofs, right? The tiles that we've been waiting for them to see. They got that when they acquired uh, Solar City. That was part of uh, when they merged those companies together. I think it has a lot of good ideas and innovation, but it's got to start delivering. And I think you brought it up, Michael, and somebody that they're going to run out, you know, cash. These guys burn cash yeah. faster than anybody. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, if they deliver, this is a great name to trade on day trade because this thing moves up to 20 bucks a day. You don't need, need a lot of options. One or two options will do you. And you can go long or short and get big moves. So I love it from a volatility perspective. I don't know. You have to get hit me on Friday morning after earnings because I couldn't tell you what this thing's going to do at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I think I have to agree with you, Mike. Um, I think it's a great short-term, you know, volatility play. Um, someone else said, you know, nobody gets as much rope as Elon Musk, right? It, uh, yep. you know, the earnings on Thursday. Well, wait a minute. Don't you have to have earnings to report earnings? <laughs> yeah, Nonsense. <laughs> right? Maybe it's the, the financial update, right? How much are we losing, right? How much cash are we burning through? But can I make but, a point, Dean? I mean, how many years did Amazon have no earnings? And Google? I, I, I had to get that in. Come on. Give me a I break. know. I, I hear you, but what if this is the next one? That's all I'm saying. I, I, I agree with what you're saying fundamentally. They're trading it as if it's the next one. Only time will tell if it is the next one. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I mean, Elon Musk has, you know, he is, you know, you'd like him or hate him. He, he's a visionary, right? And he's got the Midas touch. And, you know, he's, he's got the magic. And people are buying into it, mm -hmm. so I don't know. It's it's not a it's not a trend or swing trade for me. It's a it's a shorter term fun volatility play for sure, right? But uh, I'm not I'm not going long or short for a a you know one or two month hold on this one because who knows, man? Who knows? And, and I agree, Mike. Um, taking a taking a directional position into earnings is not a good play. Taking a volatility move, move into earnings, you know, with this straddle strangle kind of thing that. That might make sense, but uh, I got to correct myself. Yeah. Earnings are tomorrow after the open, after the close. Okay, very good. Um, but it's um, just based on you know. Listen to us, right? There's no lack of opinions about Tesla. There's no lack of attention on Tesla. It's fun to talk about. That's for sure. And I'm waiting for the pickup, man. I'm a rural guy. I want I want the pickup. 
I'll buy one of those. That'd be cool. I you don't want the flamethrower? No. No. <laughs> I, I'd buy a semi just for style points, though. That'd be cool. There you go. You know, they, they, they're good at announcing products, man, and generating buzz. Um, next up, <laughs> so if Elon Musk is a rock star CEO, what's up with when? Uh, that dude is not, uh, uh, he, uh, no, yeah, no magic here, right? No magic there. All right. Um, well, Mr. Wynn is in trouble. <laughs> To say the least, but I don't know if we need to have a discussion on what senior white guys like to do. Um, what I do find with the stock, I think it was very interesting that immediately upon all of that happening, the stock dropped $40. Um, I don't know what their earnings, what they were expecting, but it seems to have been well received. And now, you know, the stock is just kind of dropping off. Didn't edit it yesterday, nothing too great. So right now we're building at least on a weekly chart. We have um, going back to uh, the end of 2017, just twice. Hello. When before this thing begins to uh, pick up steam and maybe rally, going to rally. So I would likely sell it on a break of 160, uh, looking for at least 140. Okay, you were. Yeah, I think you were chopping in and out there, but we got the last uh, sell at a break of 160, looking for 140. Is that? I think that's the summary. Yes. Yes. Right. Very good. What does the option professor think? Of well, since since I'm here in uh, the lovely city, America's Playground, I'm very familiar with WYNN. Um, what happens here is pretty much what happens to the market. I mean, I don't know why people don't uh, look at these numbers. We hit 203 on January 25th. The 200-day average is in the 140s. You're 41% or 40% or better above the 200-day average. Anytime you get that much real estate between the price and the moving average, I just don't think uh, on a probability basis it makes any sense to, uh, you know, think that infinity is the next move. So this thing mm -hmm. I think is pulling back because it was extremely overbought. And mm -hmm. I think it was it's pulling back because they had to put a couple of things in the news. I think it's not exactly alarming news that the guy might have uh, had something to do with somebody he worked with. And uh, it's not alarming news that his ex-wife and him are not going to be celebrating any anniversaries. So, you know, this is not exactly, <laughs> you know, getting my uh, mouth to catch a bunch of mosquitoes when I hear these things on why it's coming down. So, um, you know, my feeling is, is that uh, the 200 day moving average is rising. Uh, gaming still seems to be happening out there. And uh, I'm sure Macau is still happening out there. So this is really just uh, taking the, uh, the froth off the, uh, off the uh, formula there. And, um, uh, you know, like I say, down towards the 140 area would be a fabulous place to see if it could get to. Uh, and if it didn't hold, might be a, a great buy down there. And if it gets down there off of this crazy news and not off anything fundamental, I think it makes it even better. But the volume has been very big, about 50% jump in the volume lately. So there has been some pretty big hands coming out of the thing. You know, uh, 3.6 million shares today. That's, uh, you know, a pretty good amount of people coming out. Where they is all, they, also, they, also made a, they also made a fortune on the way up, so why wouldn't they be coming out? <laughs> I think um, I think you do have to look at this fundamentally, and Wynn is out. I think he's he resigned. I think he left last week, at the end of last week. I thought that was the news. And you're talking about one of the best visionary casino operators there's been in the last 20 years. I mean, he made MGM what it is before they bought his what he had, and he left. And he came over and he made Win. He started Win, and he's the one also that have got everybody heavily involved in China. He was one of the first. He was visionary for that. So him being out is not fundamentally good for the company. Now, we had a beautiful trade, a four-banger on that Friday when the news broke. 
and we caught that we caught some puts on that thing on the way down here it's not so easy at this point you have support at this 160 level that mm -hmm. so far is holding and to me it's it's about the eight day that gold line that you can you know see it's moving down it's right now at this 159 area sorry um 169 area I'm trying to get this to come up there we go and you know it's squeezing it down so it's kind of acting like pushing it down to this 160 the, the, the 160 area and that's your range so you watch for a break of either one and that's going to give you a clue where it's going to go i actually think that you know um it's just bad news with him out there i think there's the company could be in trouble and you could see some selling further selling in this name and i'm just avoiding it at this point i think just bigger fish to fry and you know, look at LVS went through the roof on this news, right? LVS and MGM both went really well. Mm -hmm. um, so a friend of mine saying that he only resigned from the uh, Republican national chair. I thought on news, there was news that came out on Friday that he had, was stepping down as well. I think regardless, if he doesn't step down, the board's going to force him out. So I think that's the problem here. I think that is a big, it's a very negative for this company. So with I'd be the kind of, Yeah, but with the kind of money that this guy's got tied up into that company, to think that he's going to go and start playing, uh, you know, uh, uh, Marjan with somebody uh, in his spare time and not have anything to do with this company, I just think is uh, is absurd. So I think no matter whether he's listed or not listed or whatever, I'm sure he's got trained people around him who have the same vision. And I also think that uh, this guy, whether he's officially putting his uh, finger in the pie, you know, this guy's not just going to let some yokel uh, take <coughs> over his money. Uh, no way. Mm. I mean, that's my opinion. I don't know that for a fact, but, you know, I know enough and so uh, enough history that this is not a guy who just, uh, you know, throws up his arm and says, well, I guess I lost. Here's all my money. Just do whatever you want with it. You know. So th that's interesting. Um, I'm a technical trader. Um, so I'm looking and I think someone mentioned before we got a, you know, a, a support level to break here at about 160. If we break 160, I think there's a decent short and I think it was. Michael said down to about 140. I'm I'm with you on that. Not a huge move, but uh, yeah, we'll follow through on the on the on the on the on the beginning of a correction here. I certainly wouldn't be going long um, yeah. on this thing with the you know the, with the technical setup, you know. Um, and uh, again, break 160. I like it down to about 140, yeah. and uh, it could be good. Could be good. So we've been through four symbols so far. We're halfway through the show. So this is a time where we take a deep breath and uh, share things that aren't on the list here, trades that we do like, our favorite current trades. So let's go around and open our kimonos here and, and share a very specific actionable trade, hopefully, for the audience, something you would buy or sell or something. What do you like? What do you got, Michael? I know I'm first on the, I'm on the list first tonight. Um, I continue to have, I have two core positions that I've had for many years. I am long bond, uh, long gold and short bonds. And thus far that's working out real well. And I think it'll continue to work out well because as we were discussing, we were discussing prior, uh, to opening the show, you know, the, what the markets or what the perceived worries for the global markets are at least from the united states are inflation and higher interest rates and that remains that's not going away so i continue to favor being long gold and short bonds if the bonds move up past 150 again i become a much more interested seller and for gold i think this is Again, because the markets aren't, or, or, or traders are not really focusing on the underlying things that are causing a rise in gold, that whether they choose to actually pay attention or not, does not stop them from, from doing a little sell-off. Now, when the market was really selling off yesterday, gold didn't go flying through the roof. So that was also very interesting for me, but it doesn't change my longer term opinion on gold. So I, like a lot of different ways of playing gold. I think that you can do options. I think you can use um, the Jan 20s, and I'm going out 2020, okay, for a long-term trade and then, and then just kind of do a calendar. 
in that way. And you can pay for that trade simply by continuing to uh, keep a short call position in the front month and then just kind of roll um, or just buy the future and maybe buy a put if you're worried about downside. Um, as Outside of that, I love volatility. And so I like trading the VIX. I like trading VIX options. We're going to talk VXX, so I'm going to stay away from that conversation for a while. And outside of all of that, I trade futures. And I'm a day trader. So plenty to do can, over there. Can I give plenty. some breaking news? Yeah, yeah. Steve Wynn just resigned. Like oh, yeah, 30 there seconds it is. ago. When did you <laughs> I just had to pull that up as it's coming across as we're talking. I thought he had already done it. I, it was a rumor. It wasn't confirmed. He just officially oh. did it, literally, just, yeah. just, just coming across the wire. Sorry, I had to bring that up. It's hysterical. Yeah, good. That, that's worth it. Hold on a second. Okay, Michael, gold, gold bug, short on, uh, on uh, bonds. On treasuries. You've been, and you've been consistent. Yeah. Yes. Jim, what's your trade? Um, well, I tell you, it's really similar to uh, what we just heard in that the value of the stocks versus the commodities is extremely compelling towards the commodity sign. So it really comes down to if you're a believer that this inflation is going to be coming back and that deficits are going to be huge, you know, trillion dollar already, and we haven't even had the tax cut yet. And if you believe this move above 260 on the 10 year is no joke. And if you think this dollar index hanging on at 89 for dear life is what it's doing, then you'd have to say that uh, the trade this year might be to uh, have something uh, exposure into oil, have some exposure into grain, soybean, something into the gold and silver, and something on the put side on interest rates. If you're a believer that way, and if you're a believer and you're correct, you're probably going to make a heck of a lot of money. And if you're a believer and you're wrong, then again, you'll obviously have a loss in this particular area. But, uh, you know, I just don't think uh, the gold's going to hang around here forever. I don't think soybeans are going to hang around 9 or 10. Oil's going to hang around 60, 65 the whole year. And I don't think this rate at 2.6, 2.7 is going to last here all year. So if you're a believer, you place your bet. And uh, at least when you look at the relative valuation of what you're looking at versus the valuation of the stock market, um, there's a case to be made that there's a, it's worth a, a chip or two on the um, on the commodity side. All right, commodities. Yeah, nobody nobody can spell them, so you know they're not overbought. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> there you go, Mike. What's your uh, what's your secret, man? What's your what do you like? So tough here. So the market, you have to make sure we put a bottom in, I think, before you go buying anything over the next couple of days. Right? Absolutely. You got you yeah. to you got to think before you buy here. Just don't go running out and buying things. Yeah. Um, I have two I like. I'm going to go. I was thinking about Bank of America, and I really do think still believe in the banks. But I'm going to go with energy, and I'm going to go with the XLE just because this thing got beat up. And a lot of it, too, was on ExxonMobil, which was, by the way, that was – ungodly horrific earnings we got last Friday morning out of them and they paid the price for it. But this sector, I think it just got heavily oversold. So we've already seen a correction here. We saw a huge correction ready in energy. Oil is strong. You know, we, tonight we had numbers. They were still good. I think oil's just, you know, probably going to keep inching up higher and higher. I would look to come back in and just buy the ETF down here with a move down this far and just hold it. It's giving you a nice entrance. It gave back the entire, uh, you know, move yeah. here in the first part of last year. I think you have a lot lower risk here than you have going out and buying a bank right now, which is still elevated. Some of these other stocks are elevated. I would take a shot on the XLE instead of a specific name. I think I would just take the whole sector. And that 68 area that it hit uh, is kind of the former highs of September, October uh, area of last year, right? Exactly. So, you know, if it gets yeah. through here, it's probably going to try to run. It's also very extended to the downside. I mean, the eight day moving yeah. average is way above it here. It's way out of the Bollinger Bands. It's and a nice yield 262. So it's going to get some people who want to get a little cash yeah. on their money, right? And, and mm -hmm. you know, this thing could quickly move back to that high. I mean, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it wouldn't take a lot. We have a lot of oil earnings coming up in the next week, too, right? Uh, APC reported tonight. I think Pioneer reported tonight, too. And that's a high volume sell off too. It looks like the volume was uh, thirty two uh, million shares. Yep, uh, that's a lot of volume. Huh? Yeah. yeah, and so I wanted to give something different. 
And I do actually like the bomb and TBT. I'm holding it. This would be a now, so. this would be in line with you. Don't sell into the abyss. Correct. Mm -hmm. <laughs> buy the the abyss. This would be a place I would buy it down here. I would take a shot. I'm I'm bullish on uh, energy too. I think yeah. it's I think it might I think I'm I'm looking at individuals, and I'm also watching the crude oil futures, and I think there's a bit more of the correction to come, but then there's going to be a buying opportunity. I'm gonna wait for for signs of the bottom and you know a little bit higher high higher low uh before i jump in um but i'm with michael uh i'm short bonds uh bond funds uh i'm showing tlt the uh i share is 20 year plus i've been talking about this michael you've been with me jim you i've been talking about yeah. this for two months absolutely right? we finally got our entry and we took an entry on this at 122.41 got a target um wow. down one uh okay. 113 down to 104 this green lines are my target zone and um you know no crystal ball nothing sure but uh it's gonna make it <laughs> right it is absolutely mm -hmm. gonna make it down into that target zone i'm just trading this i'm 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 just trading uh far out deep in the money high delta long the puts let this thing sink like a rock right when it gets going look back what yes. happened when it gets going, it can go, baby, right? And this is the impulsive move. This well, is the prediction. here it goes. It's on. You know, we saw we saw a lot of uh, lack of um, uh, liquidity in the uh, vol uh, volatility sellers uh, ETFs and stuff like that. You know, if people really wanted to come out of the bond market on Moss, uh, you're probably going to see these ETFs have a hard time. You know, uh, having money for the redemptions. So. Uh, it's uh, it's going to be interesting if uh, if they unwind this bond market a little bit because uh, there's a heck of a lot of people on debt out there. So here's another one. Um, this is over, but um, I just got to show it. I'm not. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm bragging. It's just fun. It's fun to share, right? We got we got short the SPY on the 31st, Wednesday, right after the FOMC announcement. We saw a break. You know, all of. The whole year, right? All of January and before, big run up in the SPY. Saw a little breakdown, saw some consolidation. FOMC did their thing, right? It broke. We caught it right here at 281. We've been sitting there for, uh, you know, from Wednesday to today. Took it all the way down. And we had, uh, we, we used April put contracts deep into money. I think we were at the, the, the uh, 294s, I like going deep, right? And uh, uh, like a 200% gain on those put contracts. It was pretty stunning. Um, we're out. We just hit our stop. We're out now. But that was that's the kind of move I'm looking for, right? After, you know, this yep. technical, it's technical trading, right? Um, big run up. You see the correction coming. It breaks the cloud. Boom, take it take it and you know i didn't know that yeah. i was going to lose 1100 points that was just a, just a little frosting right my target was actually 277 i didn't know it was going down to under 260 but i'm okay that it did so technical trading works man you just you know you know fundamentals matter but reality is how the market responds to information and, and that's what we're trying to trade is reality of the market that was there that was a ton of fun and um, so TLT, I think, has the potential, like I said before, that's my favorite trade right now. Uh, there's some there's some great energy to be short. There's some great energy to be long. I'll show one more. We're short CNP, uh, center point energy. We took it short, 287, the 2787, we got a target 25. It is on the way. Too late. If you missed it, it's too late. But these corrections, man, they're, they, um, they are very highly probable when you get the technical indicators. Breaks the 200, breaks the HM local cloud. Come on. All right. It's fun to show. Um, let's get back to the list. Hey, uh, guys, let's do a, a one from the a live audience real fast. Okay. Um, let's see. So we had a, a few requests, but uh, one of them was PLCE. Uh, that's actually one we've never talked about on this show yet. So, well, again, David. Uh, P L C E. It's uh, children's, place. children's uh, clothing store. Children's place. Well, here it goes. I'll, I'll start. You guys get your charts together. Get your analysis together. 
So it's been a, a choppy uptrend, but pretty impressive uptrend if we look get a little history on this thing. Came up from a bit of a channel up, uh, you know, channel centered around 60 bucks, more than doubled up to 160. Um, it's ready to correct. It is correcting. The play on this is short, and uh, it's probably got a target zone somewhere uh, down at a, a midpoint target zone 107. I like yeah. the third. Yeah. Michael. Um, not much I can add to that, Dean. I think that that I am in total agreement with you. I think the stock topped out at 160, 165 and is now in the process of correcting. And because now I'm going on a monthly, let's see, that was going to be February, January. In November, I mean, this thing just basically started to skyrocket. And went parabolic. So totally went parabolic. It did. The correction to me is that it's going to it's gonna sink, and I believe it'll come down as fast. And I agree with your support, uh, 107, which is the midpoint range. We can go back and use a little bit of Elliott, and that probably is the or the most common areas to have a correction come in for the first line of support would be <coughs> price territory of the previous four. And if that was it, then I think you got to go 107 down to 100. Um, yep, so 100 in the zone there. I'm just, you know, I'm just doing a 38.2 to 61.8 Fibonacci retracement from the move, right? And there we go. Yeah. All right, Jim. Well, I think this stock uh, technically looks a lot like wind. Wind was uh, about 40% above its 200-day average when it hit that high point, and obviously it's unfolded to the downside. This thing <coughs> hit 161 with a 200-day uh, at around 115. So again, it's about 40% above its moving average, and so that's why it's correcting. It's overbought. And uh, the first stop around the 50-day moving average, which is where you are right now pretty much, and I think it would probably go down to 117, 120, which is where the 200-day comes in. And that would be the worst-case scenario if this thing is going to be still a good company, which, uh, you know, it is earning uh, $7 a share, so they are making money. Uh, and so basically, I would say that that's the story on that. The possibility of going down on a big break towards 117, 120, or maybe meander here. Okay. And Mr. Pisani. Retail, yuck. <laughs> um, you, know, you know, put this quickly together. You have, it came into a support support zone here, right? You know, it, it came up after that move and it spent a couple of weeks consolidating this area. So you can quickly see, I drew a couple of lines for you. It held the support zone and now it's back on the 50 day. And I think really, it, I think that what's going to happen with this rides upon the markets now. If the market is going to bounce and be strong, and we're, we haven't really talked about the overall thoughts on the markets in general, but I think this thing will try to go up and you see if it can retest the fast moving averages, the 8 and the 21. But I think, you know, you have good support at 132. And then below that, the previous breakout, it broke out at that 124 uh, level-ish, right? And you see it retested it a couple of times once it broke out and it held it. I think that would be extremely strong support to try to buy it if it came down to there. But if it's going to be any good, it's going to hold this middle this this middle uh, support zone and go from there. But I think it really depends upon the markets here. And now you got retail starts reporting, right? We got retail hasn't started really reporting yet. They're coming up, so be aware. <laughs> All right, I like your retail yuck, right? <laughs> oh, I mean that's one sector I just continue to avoid, <laughs> except for scalps. All right, David. Any breaking any breaking news there, or we move on here? Yeah, let's go back to the list. So, MU is the next one. Okay, MU proxy for the entire semiconductor sector. Uh, you can you can go find a hundred charts that look just like MU. Uh, so, what do you think of MU and the entire sector there, Michael? Um, I've always been very very favorable towards Micron. Um, I, and I believe that the last time we discussed Micron, I don't know the date, but I was expecting it to rally a bit and it seems that it did and now it's dropping off uh, once again. Now, on an Elliott Wave basis, I'm gonna say it's come down in a very nice clean 
three waves. And I'm again looking at a weekly chart. So let me go back down to the daily. Uh, still, I think it's been pretty clean. But today's rally was impressive. This thing's really got a hold because I'm now beginning to doubt that it can really get itself back above 49.89 or above 50. Um, so I, I don't hold a lot of hope out for this thing right now, um, unless the markets absolutely halt any further selling and just start to really take it all uh, higher, then I think there is a chance. Again, it's held 39 uh, twice on this little move down. It actually took it yeah. out. It put it all to, to break 39. This uh, previous if low, it, it, it just wicked. You know, the candle wick didn't close, but it took out that low. Yeah. Yeah, but it basically, would you say that it held, or would you say that it's it's a goner? I think it broke it. I, I actually, I'll, I'll go out of turn just for fun. It's it's okay. putting in, you know, after an incredible rally from, you know, what ten bucks, ten to fifty. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, it's putting in lower lows, lower highs, and now a lower low. Um, I, I, uh, Charles Dow, hundred years ago, said that's a downturn. Right, and it's ripe yep. for a correction. I think it's going to happen. I do not disagree, and I think thirty is next in line. Yep, thirty is the midpoint of the Fibonacci retracement zone. Prove right. us wrong, Jim. Take the other side. Uh, uh, here, the uh, I don't know if you remember this, Dean, but we looked at this thing about a month or two ago when it hit fifty, and your comment was, and my comment was, is that uh, it was so far overbought you just couldn't do anything with it. And then it had the pullback to 40, and now it's trying to meander its way back up. You know, to, based on where the options are trading, it might not be a bad investigation here to look at a strangle on it because uh, a move to 60, if the news turns that way, is mm -hmm. uh, possible. And then, of course, if it goes south, going back to 30. So if you got volatility of 15 up, 15 down, uh, a strangle or a straddle or something, if it's not priced crazy, uh, might be something to take a look at on this. So the setup seems to be there. I think they already announced, right? Because well, earnings are on March twenty second, so they're they're out, right? And I'm actually pulling up the chain to see what the implied volatility. Yep. They got they got a way to go before they have earnings. Um, yeah. So, but yeah. how's the volatility on the options? I'm Elevated it. because of what's going on in the markets, but nothing special. Yeah. But don't look oh, at the price has gone very far. Mike, you guys, well, you guys are missing what happened this morning. And that's why we have huge volume. They got a massive upgrade this morning, and they were strong all day long with call buying into it all day long into this move. An eleven percent move. Yeah. Yep. Look at the volume on the move today, confirming it. It's trading sloppy, right? It's had this little wedge that's been building this range. I think we talked about it about two or three weeks ago when we talked about um, AMAT as well. And yeah. you know, it right. can't get back up there. And it has one very big catalyst this week: Thursday night Nvidia reports. And so for me, it's it's a scalp it up until that event and they get out of the way before NVIDIA, unless you think NVIDIA is going to blow the doors off of earnings again. No. Um, I, I would just scalp this thing at this point and take your profits. And the one thing that's been missing is we haven't seen those big David Tepper, Bill Murray type sweeps where they come in and they buy a couple million dollars worth of in the money options that they were doing back through that big run up. They disappeared. So that, that keeps me skeptical and lots of put buying in the last three weeks on the uh, semi ETF, the SMH. So I'd be very careful, but I do like today's candle. If it can break this range, it's finally above the 50 day, which has been resistance now for the last month. Maybe it can mm -hmm. get going. I actually like Jim's idea of a straddle strangle because implied volatility at the money is not much higher than historic volatility. So you're not paying a huge premium and you might be able to, uh, um, take, you know, who, who cares which way it goes? I just want it to go, right? And right. whether the NVIDIA um, announcement or some other catalyst, right? You might be able to to uh, play it both ways and, and get a big move and, and win. I, I kind of like that. Uh, look at us. We're, we're, we're not going to make it to the list, but we got to do GE, right? <laughs> GE. We do. 
What about the VIX? Let's talk about the VIX. Let's do the VIX. Yeah, let's do the VIX. We'll do, two, we'll do GE. We'll do the VIX. Cause All right. Quickie. This is the Mamba, right? <laughs> General Electric just kind of catch a good break here. Um, personally, I think what it reminds me of, I go back to um, 2008, 2009, and I remember the day I kind of was watching Ford. And they were pounding, pounding, pounding the stock. And after hours, they were going to decide to trade this at $1.50. And in my mind, I kept thinking, you know what? If Ford actually did have to give up the ghost and close all the plants and sell everything, it has to be worth more than $1.50. So I started buying the stock. GE is so spread out. And it got its hands in so many different various businesses. I would love to, to find an analyst who actually can go in and determine um, value and to see if the stock is actually being reflective of value. You know, you're making me, you know, uh, we'll, we'll do an age test here. Who remembers Danny DeVito with that movie, Other People's Money, right? Who, yeah. who, wants, the, who wants the jelly donut, right? Um, this no. thing probably is worth more broken up than it is as a conglomerate. No. That's the problem. I think it's worth like 13. They came to the numbers when they did them like a month ago. They did right. do it? Oh, yeah, they did do that? After. Somebody went through it and they said that the problem was when they came up with the announcement, they were looking to break the company up and sell it, that the uh, the assets were worth less than the price of the stock when they figured it out. Wow. wow. That's when it was, that's that big fall. That's when it was trading up around 19. You know, wow. um, there, there could be a dead cat bounce on this thing. It's a scalp. It's a short term thing. You know, who knows? It's not there yet. There's no sign, right? Technical trading, there is no sign of a reversal yet, but who knows? Um, I don't know. Jim? It's just, uh, it's 34% under its 200 days. So if it went down to that 13 number, it'd be at 40% or better. And I don't know if you want to take a bite on it there. It's paying 314 uh, yield right now, but uh, the uh, industry group is called Diversified Holding Companies, which is about as uh, gray a description of a company as you could get, right? Yeah. yeah well, what, does, know, G, what does G, that exactly G, mean? <laughs> well, it's, you know, it's a, it's a Berkshire Hathaway. It's got Hathaway. a lot of stuff going on, yeah. <laughs> it's a Berkshire Hathaway without the, without the Oracle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway. Yep. Okay, let's go to the VIX. Let's do the VIX, and then we'll wrap it. Uh, uh, Mike, you were XX, hot. That's what we're talking about, right? XX, Mike, you were hot. You do, you go first, man. All right. So I did this chart okay. last night for. Oh, Mike or Michael? Sorry, Mike. No, go ahead, Mike. You you go. I did this chart for people last night, and I put the video up on Twitter, and I want to show you. This is twenty years of the VIX, and fifty is about the high we usually get to, unless there is an event. Now, when eight, you know, eight, right, the financial crisis, we went to 89, but that was an event. There's no real event driving this sell-off other than that we really were oversold and overdue for some type of corrective action here. I look at this and say I would not be looking to go long VIX products unless it's a scalp for intraday for protection at this point. But the, the big move, I, I, it may go back up and retest this level, but to me, the big move here is probably over. It's probably not going much higher than it went uh, into this morning when it broke 50. That's my, my general thoughts here. Mm -hmm. I, I like, I like you. your analysis. You know, I'm a, I'm a technical trader at heart, um, but I do like to have some inkling of what the thing is, right? What the hell is the VIX, right? <laughs> it's, it's, you know, what is it? It's kind, of, it's, it's kind of gauging implied volatility of things. So basically it's telling you what has happened. It's not going to tell you what is uh, what is going to happen. So it's giving you a probability index so that when it gets down to 8 or 10 or 8 or 10, the world is saying nothing's going to happen. So if anything happens, they're not prepared for it. And when it goes to 50, they're saying that uh, the world is going to come to an end. And when it doesn't, obviously, they're not prepared for that either. So, I mean, I, the way I saw the VIX here is uh, right on with Mike. He goes up to that 50 number without a big event. Likelihood is the, that that washout low last night 
of 25, 29 on the uh, S&P is your line in the sand. If we can uh, make sure that doesn't get taken out in the next week or so, and this VIX, uh, you know, maybe it has another couple of runs at, uh, you know, it's at around 30 now. Maybe it has another couple of runs in the 30s or maybe low 40s and then starts drifting back down towards the 1520 area, which is where the support would be on the VIX unless the whole thing just totally evaporates. Um, I think that you've got to hope that, or not hope that, you've got to maybe start making plans that if you wanted to buy into stuff, uh, you use that 2520 area as a line in the sand on the S&P and uh, maybe try to pick up some things uh, as they uh, dip in the next week or so uh, with the idea that it's not going to get blown out on the downside and the VIX will hold that 50 number. Right. You know, and I, you know, I, I said tongue in cheek, you know, what is the VIX? I, I can repeat that definition that you gave, Jim, and I understand yeah. that. But, you know, Tesla makes electric cars, Micron turns sand into computer chips, uh, GE sells light bulbs and nuclear reactors. Um, I don't know. The VIX is an abstract thing, and I'm a little leery of abstract things. Right? Yeah. That's my no, point. Yeah. I, don't know. I, I don't understand the exact the mathematics, but I think of it kind of like a, a speedometer. I don't know the exact mathematics, but, you know, I get an idea how it works. Yeah. Well, the VXX is actually a very short-term volatility index. Which is different than the v, the the VIX. So the VXX, the way I look at it, is like unless we have an event, as Mike uh, said, there's there's no reason for them to really pop it up. But when I look at a daily chart, it it is basically telling me that we've got one more event coming. Now whether that's actually going to pan out, I don't know. So what I always bear in mind with the VXX, particularly when you when you trade the VXX options their destiny is to go to zero. So bearing that in mind and without an event, VXX is gonna go sailing right back down to, to 30, 25 to 30. If, if the market continues to sell off, then I think there's a very high chance that the VXX will must, must follow because volatility will rise. I was going to ask you guys, do you think a lot of this sell-off really can be attributed to the uh, forced, selling, uh, forced covering of the volatility sellers? Because, um, no. you know, yesterday no. and last night, the volatility sellers have been wiped out, which means they've had to buy back all those short positions, which obviously made the VIX go even further than it should. If they've all covered and that or the majority have covered and that event is behind us, which is the destruction of the volatility seller, uh, then that would bode well that the volatility will subside now. I, I I agree with you on that one. I think that is that that was the final leg down today, right? Because they did that they did that selling last night after hours, right? That was all done. And it was and was for, and was forced and was and it was yeah. a forced deal. Yeah. And and because by the way, margins, et cetera. Credit Suisse, who owns that ETF, that ETN, right? They were the right. largest seller. They were the one that triggered this and, and, and got everybody trapped in that. And now they're closing the fund they announced today. Right. Which one? Um, I, Are you talking about BXX, Mike? Uh, XIV, which is the inverse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. So, yeah, oh, yeah, um, I do true. think I do think I that think last night's big swoosh in the futures market was because of that, and I do think that is a possible tradable low on the on the ESL of that two hundred day. But we'll see. I mean, like I think, as Michael said, time will tell. Can you get a couple of days here, a week or so, or I think it was you, Jim, that we hold here? I agree. Yeah. But it could be exciting because it'd be nice to have a great tradable low that you can have some confidence in. You can go swing. Yeah. You can put some big money to work instead of feeling like yeah. you have to just take small trades. <laughs> exactly. Good stuff. Hey, we're at the top of the hour. We're a little over. So let's go ahead and just uh, grab some closing thoughts from uh, each of the panelists, and we'll go ahead and wrap it up. So, Michael, any closing thoughts on the market, um, life in general, or your service? Mm -hmm. Well, my comments on the market are that I think it's going to be very interesting. I, I fully appreciate the increase in volatility for my own trading. Um, as a futures trader right now, I think the opportunities are tremendous. The moves are tremendous. And you, there's a lot of business because the volumes are right there with it. Um, I'm not surprised that today's bounce equals about 50% of the decline. So I think tomorrow's gonna to be a very interesting day and, and, and be very interesting because if they continue to try to take it higher, well, then they're just gonna probably buy it all back and, and it was just an anomaly. 
Um, if not, I actually think that it's like we've got more downside to come. So on that respect, I remain just prepared for downside versus, you know, trying to think that this is just a dip. And I think there's a lot more serious things behind it than just volatility sellers getting screwed. I think there's a lot going on in the world and in our country. And it is now all filtering back into the markets. So I don't hold out a lot of hope. Okay. Uh, Jim, closing thoughts. Well, I'm not going to jump off the ledge with Mike right now, but uh, <laughs> uh, there's definitely some unwinding going on here. And, uh, and uh, you know, basically uh, my final thought is, is that uh, – Watch these uh, next uh, days of trading mm -hmm. and your lines in the sand of uh, 2520 and see if it can hold up and see if they can get this VIX to go back into the uh, bottle a little bit and uh, then start looking at some things that are out of favor that you thought were good deals and now that are they're at better prices. Um, optionprofessor.com. Uh, also, you can uh, shoot an email to um, optionprofessor at gmail.com and learn more about how the different uses and risks of the options. I've been talking about how collars work. I've been talking about married puts. And when the VIX was at eight and we were at the high points, I talked about how strangles work. All three of those things had pretty good merit in the last month or so. So if you're not keen on that information, uh, shoot us an email. We'll try to get, uh, get you some information. All right. Very good. Thank you, Professor. Mike, closing thoughts. So we got, I have the ES up real time right now for you guys on the screen. And for me, it's very simple. We've gotten a lot of lows in the futures market onto these onto these dips. They like to do that and then rally off that. So we have a nice tag of the 200 day here. For me, the big area becomes, I'm gonna call it the grudge match, is the 50 day with the eight day coming down to a quick. This is where if the bears are going to make a stand, they're going to make it here. Otherwise, if they start losing this, they're in trouble. And mm -hmm. I didn't trade during the dot-com bubble, but a lot of people who did, who I talked to, have told me you got whippy moves like this that then ripped right back to new all-times highs. So here's our test. Mm -hmm. If this is going to be similar to a blow-off top like we had in the dot-com bubble, you know, everything like that, you're going to see a very quick back rally to all-time highs. And if we fail at that 50-day area, then you look for some downside and a retest of the 200. And we'll keep it simple. And thanks for having me on, guys. I really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for being here. It's fun to hear your comments. Uh, and I think I agree with you. I did trade during the uh, dot-com bubble and crash. And so, you know, this is a big move down. I'm showing the uh, S&P cash daily chart, right? And the key, just like you said, is if it reverses from here and puts in new highs, great. If it reverses from here and fails, and I like the Ichimoku cloud as a key level, you know, midpoint about 27.55. If it reverses again, oh, it's on, right? Then we go to the weekly charts and look for the weekly correction over the last nine years of uh, bull market. And it's going to be big. It's going to take us down deep. Um, and that's healthy. That's normal. That's not the end of the world, right? It's nothing to do with uh, who's the president or what the Congress is doing. That's just the market cycle, right? So mm -hmm. I'm looking for that. I think it's interesting. But uh, pattern's not complete. We got a nice dramatic low if we get a higher low and a reversal off that it's on if not on the new highs so early part of a pattern got to watch it pretty interesting i'm looking at the 10 minute es chart you know from the close till now absolutely flat line right if that was a ekg you'd be getting the paddles out so huh. everybody's waiting everybody's waiting and watching right and yeah. uh, we'll probably see what the overseas markets do overnight and uh, how it how it plays out, but it will not be boring. And uh, again, uh, Dean Jenkins, follow me trades.com is my website. And I'd love to have anybody come check it out. Great way to put your foot in the water is to just come onto my homepage, follow me trades.com, sign up for the free newsletter. I do a weekly market analysis and uh, see if you uh, like what I got going on. All right, good fun, good comments. Uh, I enjoyed all of it, it went really fast. Hopefully, the the people viewing got some great ideas and David take it back to you to wrap us up man. thanks all right thanks guys great show just want to remind everyone watching be sure to hit the YouTube subscribe button if you haven't yet to get updates on future shows also uh, both shows will be back next week crowd forecast news on February 12th Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern time 
And then the uh, next episode of this show, Analyze Your Trade, on February 13th, Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Time. And I uh, just want to thank my guests again for this week. Uh, Jim Kenny of OptionProfessor.com, Mike Bassani of AlphaShark.com, Michael Filigera of LogicalSignals.com, and Dean Jenkins of FollowMeTrades.com. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.